Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Hi, Dad. Oh, hey. All right, we are here at the shop today in Cedarville, Ohio. We are in the dog days of summer. So what we have going on here, we actually have uh, three sunflower do-it-all cultivators that we are currently building for the next season. So we have uh, actually 30 days to have each one built from the manufacturer. Uh, we try to save the setup and the uh, freight cost of having it built there. So we try to build it here at our own, own place. So that's currently what we're doing. We have one finished. One out here in the shop that we're about to finish up. The third one is outside. Hopefully we'll get to that one next week. Uh, we've got a lot of things coming up here. We've got beans to spray, we've got corn to spray. A lot of things are getting ready to happen. You know, we're still putting a splice in this. There, you know, we're not taking it off. Why? Be because that hose is horribly expensive. That's far as we're gonna get it. Hey, it's Dan Lipkis here. Want to show just a little bit on uh, our irrigation. We have some pivots. So uh, we're trying to keep them running pretty hard. Uh, we're, we're below normal on rainfall again. Uh, so uh, I have to keep rotating this particular pump between three different pivots that are on this farm. I got one bigger one and then two little ones that kind of get some corner areas. So I have to do a little process to get this thing started. I basically use the water that's in the pipe because it's only been shut down for several hours. I open my open my uh, uh, it's a back feeder valve, kind of let the water back down into my suction pipe, and that's sucking right out of a creek. So the nice thing about this is I don't have to drill a well here. Uh, we have the creek available; it takes less power uh, to pull it, and uh, you know to run the pump. And we can uh, I call it sustainable agriculture. We're using our water, putting it out in the field. You know, when you get your uh, you get your runoff goes back in the creek. So, anyway, that should be primed. So now we are going to turn on a pivot through my app. I believe everything is where I want it. I'll hit the send, and that takes as uh, it's like magic. See that pump turned on? It'll be heading up to that pivot. Uh, the pivot's got an automatic valve up at it. It's about Oh, short half mile from here, and that's all there is to it. So if you want to watch me uh, fall in a creek, it's your perfect opportunity. Hopefully I don't. So you see I got my little stair steps here. This is where it's sucking, pulling in the creek water. Uh, occasionally, because it is creek water, you know, you got leaves and other things floating down, it'll, uh, it'll plug the inlet. There's a screen on there. so. I clean that just every once in a while. Or get, it could be twigs or leaves or anything on there. So I just got my old car brush. And we just brush her off. 
could almost hear the pump change tone a little bit there as it got a little more water coming in. You want to look in the top? So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. Twenty around. That's what we call girth. Just pollen. Do the pollen sticks to it. We'll get them clean. Full of pollen. Covered in pollen. This is that new 118 day. I've got it at my house. Remember, I had to plant it here when I was done with the. Mm -hmm. Boy, they get that curve to them too on some. That's not a it means you're getting potential. Am I correct on that, or you're pushing potential? A few misses, I think. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be heat. We haven't had heat really since pollination. All right, today is Tuesday, July 26. We are out here spraying our cornfields with Brian Fisher, and uh, we're using Veltima for the fungicide. We're currently at full R1, trying to take care of it all. Definitely got Maverick doing a great job out here. He'd been the Top Gun training school. That's why he's playing silver now. All makes sense. We've done a lot of wax paper tests with Brian to put them all the way down to the ground. And how much coverage we actually get on that ear leaf is, is amazing. I mean, he just does an absolute great job with it. Could we use it? I never want to say I can never use the rain at this time of year. Um, so yeah, we could always use rain, but do we? No, we're not in dire straits, we're good. I think uh, two days ago, we just got another three tenths, so. Uh, we've been very fortunate right now. We've been getting a lot of rain, so. Or no, I don't want to say a lot of rain. We've been getting a lot of timely rain right now. So, as you can see, just looking out into the field there. And it's still wet. You know, the soil's still wet right there, so. But I never want to say I don't need rain, because take it when you can get it. But I really need that on now. That's more important. Out of curiosity, what is your spray width and speed? 85 foot. 85 foot? Yep. And what's your spray speed? Speed's probably about 160. 160. All right, <laughs> you're booking it. <laughs> I gotta go pick up my son at the house. Jump in with Junior and we're heading to the airport. No, you're off here. Oh. 
Does that sound healthy? I don't sound healthy. I'm not really sure why either. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That must be where he dumped the jugs that were sitting there. Cinder. Then he'll pull right in here, loop around, and park right here, just like what we do with the sprayer. And then we'll hook him up. He gets fuel and liquid every time. Isaiah's getting everything ready here with all the other crap that we put in there. We all get to this place. Cool, huh? Next probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Money. See how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. We got Mark to come down from Concept Agritech. We like to talk with the growers and get some of that history. That's what gave farmers returns. We got some of Concept Sweet Success. Get that soil biology ramped up. We're getting a little bit of everything. So this is the program we'll be running. That's all that's in there. Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Coming. First, you go through the drought stricken stuff. Or don't get no water. This is what it would look like if there's no water here. Let's pick a good one here. Let's pick a good one. Part two of the story. If you recall earlier in the season, um, we showed kind of a planter misfunction. Um, it was basically where, for some odd reason, the computer in the planter allocated some of the seeds from like, I think it's around five or six rows, and they put them all to the other rows. And so we have basically perfectly spaced plants that are, I still haven't measured this, but they're pushing not quite two feet apart, 20 inches probably. And then all over a few rows over, they're only three inches apart or so. So what we wanted to kind of show through the season, uh, I didn't mean for it to happen, but it, it'll, it kind of gives you some idea about competition in corn and the competition within itself. And what a corn plant can do when it's left by itself and has all the sunlight and all the fertility to itself. So here's, here's an example. This is of what we have going down through these six rows or whatever it is. So these are suckers, right? These are suckers off the main plant. If you look down here, here's the main plant, big old girthy stalk with two suckers coming off, right? Okay, the main plant, it's got two ears on it, and I believe both those will pollinate. Even the suckers will have an ear off of them. So I think there will be four ears on that plant. I bet there'll be some within this that have more than that. I've actually seen, believe it or not, up to nine on a plant. But it'll be interesting to watch this and see just how they do and how big these main ears get. These suckers probably won't get too big, but I believe they'll have ears on them. So what we noticed as, as stuff was growing is that these plants were shorter because they didn't have to compete as much. And you kind of can see like with just a few rows over where it's normal population, we're a good foot shorter than that. So those are one of the things that you can notice. So it's just kind of a, I don't know, a fun little trial if you want to say it was a, it was a planter mistake, but it kind of shows what a corn plant is capable of or what it will do if, you know, populations are reduced. So sometimes when guys have little lighter populations, 
and they think they need to replant. Maybe not, you know, maybe that corn plant can make up. Maybe it'll put two ears on or four, you know, who knows, right? So we're gonna walk over here to where it's actually too thick now. Anybody following? Okay, so here we are. So same variety, just a few rows over, but as you can see, we allocated those seeds. So this is thicker than I would plant. It's, uh, you know, I don't know, I still haven't checked this, but it's gotta be in the 50,000 range, I suppose. So a um, little more, everything's a little bit more erratic. You know, the ear height isn't all the same. Um, this one won't get an ear. It's trying, but it won't get one. Uh, looks like most of them though, I mean, if we look right down through here, um, really not bad for ear height. Uh, you're obviously not gonna throw any second ears, uh, but uh, it'll be interesting just to see how these all develop, um, whether they stand okay, height a good foot higher than where we were just at over there, because these plants have to compete and grow up more. Um, stock girth, actually, you know, for that kind of population, we have good fertility here. Not bad, you know, I've seen, I've seen worse, so not bad. Uh, we need to get the pivot running on this. It's dry out here again, which I'm gonna do as soon as we get out of here. But uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to show that. Nutrient and Nate stand behind me 100%. Benton and me work together. He's my go-to guy. We've probably known each other, what, uh, 10 years at least. You pick the phone up and they're there immediately and I can't put another name on anybody else I'd rather work with. Plants look very healthy. Yeah, sometimes we put secret sauce in it. <laughs> we actually become a real good team. Only the best products from Nutrient for us. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. side we're using is Veltima. This uh, I think is our third year with it. It's been working great. Uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in northern Ohio. So you know the weather has been playing in our hands this year and we normally we've already flown all of this corn but we was able to wait until July 26 today. You know, you know it's already past blister stage starting to fill out already have we seen today. So that's normally late for us but you know luckily we've been able to keep disease pressure away. And Veltima should, that should protect us all the way through the rest of the season. Kelpin's one of those things where we're not in the heat stress right now, we're not in water stress right now, but as long as it stays in the plant, it can stay in there for 30, 45 days. So I can't see the forecast that far out, so if we turn hot and dry, I know it's gonna be, that's gonna be fine. We wanna keep that plant, and you know, and then, then you know, we're, we're also talking about what amino acids that we're putting into that plant to prevent stress. So we're just trying to cover all the angles within the AY corn foliar, what's already in the tank that we're putting in with the kelpine. Then with the, uh, with the insect pressure, what we're putting in is Tombstone. That's a Loveland product. So we've been very pleased with that. The mixability of it is very nice. That's pretty much our, our full mixture here. That's all. What people don't get to see behind the scenes is our mass text chain, which Seth labeled serious ag. Which I don't know how much seriousness actually comes from that one, but man, you can get beat up in a hurry from that text chain. And uh, Jen and Levi has been able to fight right back, so it's been fun. I mean, you know, we're really great as a group from both shows, the Podfellers and the Corn Warriors. Everybody gets along great. We all have a bunch of fun, and that text thread kind of really shows it. Everybody's personality. So, awesome, yeah, that's awesome. Everything mixing okay? Yeah, everything's good. 
We're going to eventually throw in uh, two trial products. Yeah, Can so you mark them some different just so I know where they're at? Yeah. Or, so two full loads. One, two different mixes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Nope. They're full loads. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's been great. We uh, was in a field uh, before we came up here. The coverage is excellent. We went all the way down below the, below the ear leaf, getting great coverage throughout the canopy. Like I said, I don't ever want to wish the rain away, but uh, it'd be nice if we could just hold off long enough to get all these acres sprayed and he's well on it. He's already got uh, 1,900 acres done, so uh, on the last 1,900 acres. And when you want to hire the best in the business, you hire Fisher Crop Care by Air with Brian Fisher. See, he unhooks the hose and he's getting ready to leave right now. Stupid weeds. So right here we're looking at the short corn. Uh, something new getting ready to come out. So we got uh, 120 foot of it, about uh, 12 acres over total, 111 day. As you can see, really stacks all the nodes up through there. Girth, the stalk, look at every leaf, how they're just stacked all the way up through there. So you can see where they're really shorting it up at. It'll be interesting, you know, hopefully we can combine the ears into the head. Hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Raccoons don't come and pick it. But it's, you know, it's noticeably not much taller than what I am. So it's a lot shorter. Uh, it's definitely going to give us advantage moving forward. Uh, we don't have a high clearance sprayer, so we'll still be able to use our, our own sprayer and be able to spray this whenever we, we want. So looking forward to it. Hopefully it yields. We got the population ran anywhere from 32,000 all the way up to 64,000. This is first look at it. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. What we're excited for is especially on narrow rows. We're on 20 inch rows. So, you know, we're always looking for the short hybrids as it is. So this corn is like made for us. And then we can still get an ear leaf that big. You know, that's a good thing. The ears look great. I mean, I'm really excited for this corn. Really, really excited for it. I think we can do a lot of, a lot of big numbers with it. I know we're on the outside, but that's about as short as you'd want corn to pick up with a corn head or two. Oh yeah. Get a good one. Yeah, mate. Like that guy here is a little bit lower. That could be a, be a problem. Oh, we can't walk out in there because we just, uh, just sprayed it with insecticide. I don't think you guys want to no. go out there and have the craps for the rest of the day. It, it's weird. It kind of looks like corn that was cut off at the knee. Yeah. It, like, walk weird. You know, it just looks... Take a baseball bat through a draft's knee. 100%. Knock down a couple notches there. Yep. It looks like you yep. just buried your corn like two and a half, three foot deeper. That's for the wind. We don't want it to lower, eh? Yeah. Off, eh? We got to keep it short, eh? <laughs> we don't need our corn over for that falling on over there. Next probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Money. You see how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore.